morning is actually a, a very um, special occasion. We are very proud and very pleased to uh, welcome His Excellency Mr. Jawad Ashraf, is the High Commissioner of India to Singapore. We are really very honoured, uh, in fact, to, to be hosting this. We don't want to say farewell, we want to say hello to you and hope we will always keep in touch, uh, Your Excellency. And uh, I also like to welcome the IRO Council and the IRO members uh, to this uh, uh, farewell uh, gathering. Uh, and to start, I will, uh, will introduce uh, his secretary, Mr. Jawad Ashraf. He came in to um, make the Indian government uh, envoy to Singapore in 2016. Uh, prior to this appointment in the, uh, as the High Commissioner, to Singapore, he headed Special Projects Division in the Ministry of External Affairs in at New Delhi. And uh, he's from the 1991 batch, Indian Foreign Services Officer at the headquarters, formerly known as Joint Secretary in the Prime Minister's Office. Actually, he's considered by his peers as one of the finest minds, a brilliant, brilliant uh, Commissioner. And we are told that is being assigned to be the ambassador of France this year and set to leave Singapore in July. We are so happy for him and uh, hope you know all the best uh, for his future endeavours. Now, for IRO, when we start our function or our ceremony, uh, it's our tradition to read the Declaration of Religious Harmony. The Declaration is close to our heart because, you know, this is what our mission is all about, inter-religious harmony. And it is my honour to invite Mr. Omos Avari, he is the IRO Council member representing Zoroastrian faith, to open the event by reading the Declaration of Religious Harmony. Please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Marikan. Thank you. Uh, let's start the Declaration of We the People in Singapore, declare that religious harmony is vital for peace, progress and prosperity in our multiracial and multi-religious nation. We resolve to strengthen religious harmony through mutual tolerance, confidence, respect and understanding. We shall always recognize the secular nature of our state, promote cohesion within our society, respect each other's freedom of religion, grow our common space whilst respecting our diversity, foster inter-religious communication and thereby ensure that religion will not be abused to create conflict and disharmony in Singapore. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Homan Savari. Really, thank you. It is uh, now is for me to invite the president of IRO, most dynamic, a very hardworking man, and uh, he has pushed Ayaro to very great heights. I thank you, President Venerable Te Kwang Thank you so much for all your services to Ayaro. And can I invite you uh, to give your welcoming speech? Thank you. Thank you, Malikan. His Excellency, Mr. Jawi Ashra, High Commissioner of India. My esteemed colleagues of the IRO Council, members, partners, and supporters of IRO. Good morning to all of you. Thank you for joining today's farewell gathering for Mr. Jawe Ashraf. We understand that the invite came at short notice, so I sincerely thank all of you for taking time to be with us. Mr. Chari Ashraf has become a dear friend for IRO members in his three years of service as a High Commissioner of India to Singapore. He has shown respect and support for IRO's interfaith work in Singapore. As he is now set to leave Singapore for his next assignment, we wanted to arrange this meeting to show our appreciation for his friendship. We 
thank Mr. Jerry for being part of IRO's engagement in Singapore. He makes an effort not to miss our IRO Day celebration and other significant inter-religious events. He found this was IRO the beacons of harmony in the words of coupling divisions. He also often refers to IRO's interfaith prayers as a powerful symbols of inspiration for more to rise above the boundaries of our identities and seek the aims of all religions, which is peace among all people. Thank you, Mr. Jerry, for your good words. We are always grateful to supporters like you who recognize IRO's and to foster interfaith harmony. Mr. Charlie, we are going to miss having you in our IRO gatherings, but we know that whenever or wherever you are, your support to our interfaith mission will continue to hold our ties strong. On behalf of our IRO's councils and members, I wish you well in your new role as India's ambassadors to France. May you be blessed with good health, prosperity, and progress. Once again, I thank everyone who has joined us today. Stay safe, healthy, and happy. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, for your kind speech. Thank you. On behalf of the IRO, thank you so much. Our next uh, speaker will be is, uh, Ambassador K. Sabapani. He was the past president of IRO and he was actually instrumental and also behind the scene organizing this gathering. He felt very strongly uh, for you, Mr. Ambassador, uh, that you reserve the honor and you at least deserve a formal farewell from us. Thank you, Mr. Kasavapani. And uh, may I now invite you to say a few words in appreciation of Mr. Jawad from His Excellency. Please. Good morning, High Commissioner, dear friend, and fellow IRO members, HAB members, and all of us who share the spirit of interfaith harmony and peace. It is very difficult to say farewells. It is particularly difficult at this time because the person we are saying farewell to, for me, is not only a fellow diplomat, a friend, but he leaves Singapore, he leaves me as a soulmate. I first came to know uh, His Excellency at a Taipukum festival. At that time, I did not know him. So I asked somebody who this gentleman was. He had two cameras with him and he was busy taking photos every, every angle he could find. Then later I came to know he was the newly arrived High Commissioner of India. And being a fellow diplomat, of course, we got together quite fairly soon. But he had so many aspects to his uh, job, to his life, that it was very difficult to catch up with him. He was a social worker in the sense, he was interested in people. He was also um, a deeply learned person. And of course, he had to do his job as a High Commissioner, and that is not an easy job because any, any one time you can have problems, but he always faced them with great unanimity. And today, Singapore and India are enjoying the best of relations as a result of the hard work that he has put in. But my job today is to say farewell to him and as an IRO member. And here I will say, he always made sure that IRO was uh, recognized, was had a special place 
in any public gathering. And I can remember one. It was the immersion of Gandhiji's ashes in Clifford's field. He made sure the IRO council members, including myself, were there, uh, given a special place, and also uh, to, together with our patron, Swoon uh, Chok Tong. That was the first, first major event. The second major event was when he had another program where he also made sure that the spirit of IRO was reflected in the anthem that he created, the Indian anthem he created, he, he choreographed together with my friend um, Amitam, and that was really a hit. So there were so many ways that he has enhanced uh, religious understanding, cultural understanding, and today we are, we are uh, it is, we are not sad to leave him because I think his, a bit of his heart will always be here and he will come back. But more importantly, he's going to a place where he has got a terrific opportunity to create cultural understanding in, in across the world. Because the place he goes to is UNESCO. UNESCO is a, is a world's leading body to promote the peace and understanding through culture, through uh, various things. Huh? So I'm sure he's going to make a mark there and make us all feel very proud and very happy that it, it was from Singapore that he went to Paris and from Paris he's going to be across the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, <coughs> uh, Mr. Kasavafani, for your speech and all the com compliments for our guest of honor. Of course, he deserves it, surely. Thank you again. The, our next speaker is Imam Habib Hassan. Imam is a long time IRO council member. Uh, and I was told he's also a good friend of His Excellency. So he's taken this opportunity to compliment his Excellency at this gathering. Imam Habib Hassan, please. Good morning, everyone. Um, I feel this occasion is happy at the same time sad. I'm happy to meet everyone, and especially our good friend, His Excellency High Commissioner, but at the same time sad to hear that we are leaving Singapore. You are one of the most humble Indian High Commissioner many of us have known. You are very kind in your heart. Always look down on everyone. And you listen and you feel the pulse of the Singaporean people. And you go all out to help and to participate in many of our functions as just His Excellency Mr. K. Sebafani uh, gave us a very brief but important contributions what we have done not only to the IRO but also to Singapore. This I feel many of us cannot forget and many of us shall remember very well. At the same time, you know, when we look back at the founding father of the IRO, it was Molana Abdul Alim Siddiqui. Molana Abdul Alim Siddiqui was born in India. He was born in India. And he was one of the person who initiated <coughs> this IRO inter-religious organization, which was the oldest inter-religious organization in the world. And he died in Medina in Saudi Arabia. I wish all the best, Your Excellency, and I know you will not forget us in Singapore. And we hope that you will keep in touch with us and give us constant advice, and we shall always be together, how far you are, but you're always closest to us in our hearts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Imam Habib Hassan, for that excellent speech. Our Excellency deserves all the compliments that you have given him. 
and being a good friend, I can understand your emotion. Inshallah, we will meet again with him in the near future. Thank you, Imam. We'll share it in the future. And now, to the important part of this gathering is to hear the speech by His Excellency, Mr. Jawad Ashraf, the High Commissioner of India to Singapore. Your Excellency, please. Well, good morning to everyone. Uh, it is a great pleasure and joy for me to uh, be able to interact with and meet my good friends in IRO. It's a very special organization. And um, a, this is a unusual circumstances in which we are saying farewell and meeting today. Uh, this is the sign of times. But again, I would like to thank all of you Ambassador Kesar Bhutani in particular for organizing this. Uh, Venerable uh, Se Kwang Ping, uh, thank you for your leadership this year uh, in IRO. Um, Lord Manikin, uh, I we always enjoy your absolutely wonderful uh, comparing. You always bring a great sense of humor and a human touch, both humor and human touch in your comparing. It is never it is never very uh, practiced and rehearsed. It's always very spontaneous. Um, Sayyid uh, Saab, uh, uh, Sayyid Hasan Saab, always a good friend. And thank you for your kind words too, um, for the initial reading of the pledge uh, for Musavari. And uh, to all the other members of IR. Uh, it is, it's again, really, let me say a great pleasure uh, to join you today. And I'm really, really touched and honored that uh, you've come together on Sunday morning uh, to meet and to say uh, goodbye to me. Um, it is also very generous of you to, uh, uh, to show this uh, video, which of course I will talk about a little later. Uh, when I came to Singapore and when I learned of the IRO, I was quite intrigued and, quite, and very interested uh, because uh, we are living in a world of uh, uh, where the challenges across the boundaries of identities, religions, races, ethnicities uh, are all growing. And uh, just when human beings thought that they were making progress as, as humanity, we see the recurrence, the resurfacing of so many of those challenges that humanity has dealt with uh, throughout its history. Uh, IRO, um, was also very unique because in some senses it's autonomous it, at another level it also has a uh, sort of a patronage and support of the agencies of the government uh, we were delighted to see that uh, ESM Rochotron had taken on the patronship uh, of the organization I have um, read through the, uh, through the vision that led to the creation of IROS uh, now a little over 70 years ago I also still have a copy, uh, copy of that uh, contribution to this, which I got from uh, the organization. Uh, it is a very good reprint. I mean, and throughout this, it also has the messages of those uh, who were there at the founding and, and highlighting a common message of peace that permeates uh, across all religions and the message of peace, the highest ideals of humanity the uh, the oneness of people across the diversity of those beliefs and those messages were there from the diverse sources that came together in this publication which in many ways is like both the vision and doc vision document as well as a sort of a guide to the constitution of this organization i have uh, great memories of so many events that we have participated in uh, I remember in the first year in, in March of 2017, IRO had its annual day when uh, Minister Grace Fu was the guest of honor. And I was coming from a holy celebration uh, in where the deputy speaker was there in uh, Tong Chong Hu, uh, near West Side. And I came there, cleaned myself and came for this, uh, for this event. Uh, since then, I tried to be present at all those events. I remember being at Maxwell, uh, Avenue office when uh, ESM became the uh, took over as the patron. I saw the exhibition uh, with him, and it's a very important 
exhibition because it speaks both of the challenges and the process through which uh, those challenges have been met. We were together at, uh, I've seen you at Pranji. We, whenever we honor the dead at the Kanji War Memorial, it begins with the invocation of IRO. And it is a reminds us that you know, across again, we can all rise from the, uh, from the debris of conflict, not only to the honor the dead, but to come together as people and as humanity. But that's the only way we can actually honor the dead. So your presence there has always been uh, a, a great symbol of what those memorial services really have been. Uh, I've seen we've worked together in different forms. I remember, of course, it was our great honor and Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji was very uh, happy that members of the IRO had joined him and ESM Go Chok Tong uh, when they unveiled the uh, plaque uh, of Mahatma Gandhi at Clifford Pier in June 2018 to uh, commemorate the immersion of ashes uh, of Mahatma Gandhi of the Clifford Pier in March 1948. Now, even then in 1948, is the procession that brought the ashes for urn from Victoria Memorial Hall or Victoria Concert Hall to the Clifford Pier uh, was accompanied by people from different faiths. And uh, this is something which we also wanted to recreate because religious harmony um, and harmony between people, uh, equality, justice, these were values that were non-violence. These were values that were really dear to and defined the life and the mission of Mahatma Gandhi. And I could think of no better organization to be present there than, uh, than the inter-religious organization. And of course, very, in some sense, I derive a degree of pride also from the fact that we, one of the visionary founding fathers of IRO, uh, Maulana Abdul Alim uh, Siddiqui, was born in India, but he was really a citizen of the world. Uh, he, once again, his life was one where he was born in one place, but he embraced the entire world and humanity. Um, what is very important, and I say this about Singapore, that is, law can be a deterrent. Laws can act against those who practice hate or preach violence or actually engage in it or foment uh, divisions between communities, races, religions, linguistic groups. But laws alone cannot be a source of promoting goodwill, amity, understanding and love between people. That is an exercise. That is something which, is, which requires constant, continuous endeavor. It cannot happen by itself. Human instincts don't always work in that way. And laws can, therefore, if they are very strictly enforced, can create a sense of tolerance. Tolerance, but it does not necessarily mean it will create an environment in which people embrace each other when they actually love what the others are doing, when they have an understanding of the person's faith, beliefs, traditions, and cultures. And for societies to be truly harmonious, the understanding, affection, love is very important, more important than laws. Because if that doesn't exist, there will always be times of pressure, there will be times of great stresses in society when the fabric can tear apart. For example, during great economic depressions or a pandemic when our lives are disrupted. Those are moments when our livelihoods are uncertain, when our future seems dark. Those are the moments when we can see fissures in societies, when we can see strains tearing the uh, fabric of, uh, of a nation, of a community. So this is why that understanding and affection, goodwill, all of those values are important. And to do that is a constant exercise, constant endeavor. It has to be passed on from generation to generation. It has to be inculcated when 
when children are young, uh, when they must see this as a natural phenomena in life. And IRO has been playing that role incessantly, consistently in Singapore. Singapore is religiously the most diverse society, the most diverse country. It is only 719 square kilometers. It is a resident population of just 5.7 million. But there is no faith in the world which is, does not have practitioners and followers over here. And there is no religion which does not have a place of worship. So it is a tribute to the uh, founding fathers of Singapore. It is a tribute to the, uh, to the successive generations of Singaporean leadership that have nurtured this value, this diversity, and created through these diverse strands a uniquely Singaporean identity. But governments don't do this alone. It has to be, it, and constitutions are not enough. Laws will never suffice. So it has to be a whole of society effort. And the manner in which I have seen government here also support the work of IRO is, is truly remarkable. And one of the things that has always struck me in my personal experiences here is the fact that whenever there is any religious celebration in the city, and there are many throughout the year, people think of Singapore only as very hardworking, hard-nosed uh, business people, but I think they have a very warm and a very deep uh, human side in which they celebrate their festivals, they practice their faiths with great gusto and great fervor. Now, in each of those festivals, I often see the leaders of uh, the government and communities participating across their own faiths and festivals. It is a very important thing. It is when you are sitting in Hari Raya Posa uh, on the floor of a, of a mosque and you find that you are sharing the star with um, with people of diverse faiths, when ministers and leaders are also present, um, when you are there for Besak or Besaki, when you are there for uh, Piposam or for, uh, um, for, for Eid and for uh, uh, Eid al-Azhar, or you are there for the firewalking, for Christmas. Then every occasion we see um, the presence of community leaders and political leaders uh, coming together to celebrate in a common sense of joy. This is a very, very, and which is something which you would see, I have uh, tried to bring out uh, in that uh, video. So if you see throughout the year, I mean, it, it across every month, there is some uh, great festival, streets are, uh, are lit up, uh, people come together and appreciate what it brings in terms of color and in terms of uh, joy and fervor and a vibrancy uh, to the life uh, of Singapore. And the, this is a, um, something which, uh, we, we, which, which I really learned to appreciate. I remember even at a time when you have situations where you have a synagogue hosting an iftar party, you have a church hosting an iftar party, and you have uh, people from all faiths joining for Shivra. And even as the diaspora of, and the diversity of Singapore has expanded, I see new festivals becoming part of the life of Singapore. Holy from India, for example. It is relatively new to Singapore, but nowhere in the world would you see 8,000 people coming together to celebrate uh, Holi. Not even in India, in one particular place. There is in the month of uh, September, October, Navratri, which is a Gujarati festival largely, where you have the Dandiya dance. People come from Ahmedabad to Singapore to celebrate it. From Gujarat in India, they come here to, uh, because it is done so well. Uh, for the first time, I have seen many festivals of India in Singapore. As I always say, there is one city in the world where you can experience and see all the festivals of India. You can't do that even in any Indian city because, again, there, is a, there are cities in the north and east and west and India is so religiously diverse with so many different traditions that they 
you don't see them all in one place in singapore i have experienced it i have seen thousands for the first time and, and experienced the joy of even having conversation uh, with it saw their prayers in in telukaya street um so it was very moving experience for me um when of course uh, you know besak day has always been something which in other postings also i have uh, enjoyed and each visit for example to the putta to relic temple uh, was always a great joy uh, and a source of um, satisfaction to me as also to all the mosques and the temples and the gurudwaras in this uh, in this uh, great city uh, so there is a it was in fact as part of not just as part of my diplomatic life but to me it was uh, something which was at a personal level very important because it was something values that i strongly believe in and adhere to it's a values that represent the heritage of india as well so when we today uh, look at uh, singapore uh, we are we have to as uh, remember that in the month of november you have diwali but it starts from september and i always tell people that if you can have festivals here for one and a half months where everybody participates or if you have the lights of gelang uh, uh, light up or you when you have it on orchard road or when you have it um on the uh, on the south bridge road uh, you feel a sense of people coming together of a nation recognizing and paying honor to all faiths of the world because it is not just done in the privacy of your homes it is done in a very public way and that is something which is particularly important so i as, as we as as prime minister as uh, senior minister and as dpm in their recent speeches have pointed out we cannot ever take harmonious relations between race religions and cultures for granted we've seen across the world sometimes in matter of just a few days or in matter of a short period of time um uh, new fissures emerge of uh, of conflicts within and between societies and therefore this has to be a continuous effort the role that ir plays in this can never never be overestimated i think it is it bears recognition it is something which uh, is become even more necessary now than it ever was in in recent at least in recent times and i have to tell you that you know um, i nominated i i have nominated uh, iro for the gandhi peace prize there is an annual award given by the gandhi foundation uh, in india by mahatma gandhi foundation is a gandhi peace prize I, i do not know what the jury will eventually decide there's always a preference to give it to somebody in india but i thought that the work that iro is doing is resonates very very strongly with the life the message and the mission of mahatma gandhi he wasn't just a uh, you know the leader of the india's great and peaceful uh, struggle for freedom but he embodied values that are relevant Uh, uh for all times and across the world they are universal and timeless and i thought uh iro would be a perfect recipient and I, because i also felt that the world needs to recognize uh the work that iro is doing and therefore when i thought of making i mean what did i want to take away most unique from singapore and i thought i would do a video of the photographs that i've taken of various festivals i called it the other side because i know for singaporeans it is your central to your existence but as a resident and an outsider and a visitor and for the rest of the world the stereotype of singapore is usually that of central business district of infrastructure of changi airport of the ports of uh, merlion of marina bay sands and um, and gardens by the bay all the symbols of progress and those are important but i think what people miss is this and a lot of singaporeans also told me they haven't seen some of these uh, images before and some of the sing and expatriates also tell me that they haven't been to these places and part of it was to generate awareness here and outside of a the soul of singapore of the wonderful things uh, that make it a really vibrant city 
and this is as important in my view, in fact, one of the solid foundations of Singapore's success, peace, progress and prosperity that was uh, there in the pledge. A bedrock for Singapore is the harmonious uh, society and the peace that exists between people, sense of togetherness, because without it, it would be a very fragile and no, num no amount of policies, no amount of, uh, uh, of infrastructure, whatever you do, will be enough uh, to achieve the dreams of all uh, the residents and all citizens uh, of Singapore as a nation. So this is an important dimension of life here, not often appreciated. And when I will be in Paris, um, when I, both as ambassador of India to France and also represent us in UNESCO, I will also speak about the, the very unique aspect of Singapore and a unique gift of Singapore to the world, uh, not just in the way it is, but in the institutions like IRO. Um, so you've been a key pillar, uh, perhaps not as recognized as it should be outside, uh, but in, in fostering that sense of a nationhood and harmony and amity between people, affection for each other, sense of goodwill in a world that is uh, not necessarily always uh, feels the same way. Uh, so I'm really honored and delighted to be present here today and to, um, to join you all because you've been a very important part of my life here in Singapore. Look forward to remaining in touch and I, whenever I have an opportunity to return, I shall certainly do it. And above all, I value the great affection and um, the love that I have received from all of you. Always felt very comfortable, very happy to be present in any IRO uh, um, event, in any IRO session. So thank you very much. Um, we shall uh, remain in touch for sure and look forward to IRO contributing again, continuing to do so for the larger good of humanity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency, for the excellent speech, as always. There's a tremendous amount of words of wisdom, of course. It is also your experience. That's what uh, they always compliment you with having a very fine mind. You have analyzed the situation very well. And I'm so glad that you have deep understanding and belief in interfaith harmony. And uh, you have made it very, very clear about the importance of interfaith harmony. You have complimented us, you have complimented Singapore. Uh, we treasure all these words. And surely, inshallah, we will also be publishing in our magazine about you, about your work, and about your beliefs. And uh, these are important points that you have brought out. And we will not forget that. One thing we would like to tell you, uh, you know, please maintain this important friendship. It is not easy to get someone who have very deep understanding and belief in the faith harmony. This is important today. Thank you, Your Excellency, for such an excellent speech and hope we will meet again. Don't forget us when you are in Paris. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now, the IRO, the last part of our program will be the IRO invocation. This, our invocation, our prayers, is something also close to our heart. And uh, we will always read out starting in a meeting or sometime at the end of our IRO meeting. And the words are strong, meaningful, and it will help us uh, to get closer in the interfaith uh, relationship. It is therefore my pleasure to invite Mr. Kurmit Singh, the IRO council member representing the Sikh community, to close today's event with a reading of the IRO invocation. Mr. Gurmit Singh, please. Thank you, sir. Oh Lord, increase in us understanding and knowledge and set us free from the bondage of greed, hatred and ignorance so that we may awake, arise and advance until the goal is reached, giving our bodies to work and our minds to the Lord. May we work vigorously keeping within spiritual discipline to bring peace in our hearts, peace in our families, 
peace in our cities, peace in our planetary home, the world. May we learn to master ourselves, sublimate our combative energies into creative channels, and freely offer ourselves in the service of our fellow men and our Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, to ever strive to keep on these lines to promote peace on earth and goodwill among men. By thy grace, may we all prosper. Thank you, Mr. Gurmit Singh. Uh, Gurmit Singh is the second generation. The late father was, I believe, a secretary of IRO for many, many years. You have followed the footsteps of your father and you're also the past president of IRO. Thank you, Mr. Gurmit Singh, for reading of the IRO invocation. Now, we come to the end uh, of our gathering. I am so touched by the very excellent speech of our guest of Tapana, His Excellency Mr. Javed Ashraf, the High Commissioner of India to Singapore. We thank you. We thank, we thank you for your excellent speech. We pray for your good health. We pray that all your future endeavors will be a success. And we also pray that we will be meeting again together to carry out our sacred mission of interfaith harmony. Thank you. And for all our friends and uh, in the IRO council members, thank you very much for sacrificing your Sunday to be with us for this very important occasion. I'm so glad that we have this uh, gathering uh, to honor His Excellency. With that, I thank everyone. Stay safe and happy. Thank you. Thank you. Your photo. Photo already taken, but you can say hello to one another, say goodbye to one another before we leave. Those who have not taken their breakfast, this is a time. Yeah. Thank you. All the best, Excellency. All the best, Your Excellency. Well, wish you to your excellency we wish you a very happy journey to france and a new position thank you very much thank you to all of you yeah. um, really this is a very special um, uh, occasion for me um, my i really value my relationship with my um, excellency you're not going to Believe me, we'll be meeting again and again and again. Yes, Thank we you. will and look forward to us uh, continuing to remain in touch. Technology enables us to be constantly in touch. And whenever you have uh, an event like this, do include me in it. I'll be happy to join from uh, uh, from Paris. And all the best, my, my good wishes. I'll follow the work of IRO always. And thank you for all for the personal greetings that people have typed into the uh, into the Zoom message. Uh, they mean a lot to me, these uh, words, and I'll always cherish them, cherish these relationships, and always uh, hold, treasure this work that is being done, and above all, the relationships that we have forged together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Wish all you all the best. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Stay healthy, safe, Your Excellency. Thank happy. You very much. Thank you. Very well, uh, well being. Uh,